One of the big stereotypes I think of queer women is that they're attracted to every woman around them. And so a lot of times um, I'll get questions about, you know, from people that aren't in Greek life, people that don't know me, people that don't understand my sexuality and what I'm about. They're like, oh, is it ever hard um, to be around that many women? I'm like, no, like I'm, I don't know. When I, coming into college, that was one of, that was my first rule is no one in my sorority, just because everybody I hear I see as sisters, because um, I don't want to come off as like the creepy lesbian stereotype. I'm Cassie, I am a senior actuarial science major and I'm from Houston, Texas. I am one of a few queer identifying individuals in FIMU. Um, there are a few more people. Um, I think I'm the most out of all of them. I think all I had known about Greek life was how they were portrayed in movies. So House Bunny, um, Legally Blonde, those types of movies. And looking back and watching them again, I realized how much the loving sisterhood is portrayed. Um, but I think that like the like the bimbo type of stereotype was more portrayed than the supportive sisterhood. So I think at first I was like, I'm not stupid mom. Like I definitely wouldn't be in one. And my mom commented on how I'm very philanthropic and I'm very nice and I'm very extroverted. And so she was like, you should consider it. So I decided to go through under the uh, condition that I wasn't gonna join. I was just gonna go, I was gonna meet people and throughout the week, I just fell in love with the whole process and really enjoyed being here. Um, so I joined on bid day freshman year through formal recruitment and I've just loved it ever since. During recruitment, I did not bring it up very much, but I did try to subtly bring it up at every house in the way of if they asked what I was looking to get involved with, I would mention that I wanted to start volunteering at the LGBTQA plus resource center um, and kind of gauge the reactions from there just because I was kind of looking for a house that would be very affirming of something like that. Even if you were just an ally, I would want to be a place where they're supportive of that. And so then on bid day, we got to the house and I got my bid day buddy and we were talking and first, like one of the first questions she asked me, she was like, are you excited to meet the guys? And I was like, well, I'm not really into guys. She's like, oh, and I was like, yeah. She's like, cool. And I was like, awesome, okay. So it was really easy. And then she uh, kind of spread it word of mouth, which I was comfortable with. Everyone was really positive about it. Um, I got into a relationship my freshman year and it was long term and I brought her to all of our formals and everyone was very supportive and very welcoming of it so that was really nice. I've talked to queer individuals in other chapters. They are not comfortable talking about it. They don't feel that they can tell people about it. They don't live openly about it with um, their fraternity brothers or sorority sisters. Um, an example that I heard recently was someone was out in or came out in a chapter and got bullied for it and someone else brought that to the attention of their um, version of standards or discipline and they were like, well, we don't really want to make a big deal out of this so we're not going to do anything. Um, whereas here, I know that if anybody said anything to me, even as a joke that was offensive, it would be shut down immediately by our executive board. Being inclusive and accepting of everyone and affirming everybody's identity starts at your leadership and it trickles down and it's, if it's enforced well. All of Greek life has to attend an event called Do It Sober about alcohol awareness and sexual assault and be able to understand the risks of that. And I think that a similar presentation should be done about respecting other people's identities and ways to be affirming of people's identities, not just sexual or gender, but also like religious affiliation and cultural background because a lot of this unaffirming and unaccepting nature is uneducated. I think by providing these educational tools uh, from Panhellenic or from IFC, it would really show people in chapters how to talk to people of different backgrounds and be more inclusive.